Oh my lord, we have such a lineup for you. Later on, you from Alex P, Loose Lid, Killy Killer Dwyer, Inglewood, Dave Costello, a brief view of the Hudson, Rob Schmuel, holy shit. But kicking it off, I'm going to let somebody else introduce for you, and this is our host for the evening, the one and only Inglewood. Good evening. Good evening. So you got the echo on there? Yeah, we can leave that on there. That's okay for me for right now. Echo. Welcome to night seven of the 2015 Winter Andy Folk Fest. Yeah. I'm not your only host for the evening. Mangy, my other half of Scab God, will also be joining me at one point. But the reason why he cannot be in stage at this moment is because he's going to be on the stage in a few moments. <laughs> it's, it's kind of awkward, I just got introed by someone to do an intro for someone who's going to do intros for more people. This is Inception of hosts right here, ladies and gentlemen. But let me introduce to you Julian Vance really quickly. Let me see what I can say about Julian Vance really quickly. Julian Vance is actually a gay man living in a straight man's body told me 30 seconds ago. Yeah, Julian Vance one time got fired from a telemarketing job because a woman picked him up at a bar and drove him a hundred miles away without him knowing. He woke up the next day in a different city. <laughs> that actually happened. <laughs> this is, these are cultural things. One time Julian Vance got down on four knees because he was having indigestion and he was trying to force a fart out in the middle of a work shift in Times Square. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you, Julian Vance! Yay! Yay, thank you. Yay! I fucking hate you. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Give it up for me. Give it up for me. Yeah. 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 Yes. That's all true. I forgot about that, um, about that story of waking up 100 miles from my home and losing my telemarketing job. It was, uh, and oh, that, that she was a terrible human being too. Um, look, if you're gonna pick somebody up at a bar and take them 100 miles outside of the city, tell them this. Don't, don't just, I, I was just drunk at 19 in a bar, and this woman was 35 and kidnapped me. That's a, I think before 20 years old, you can still be kidnapped, right? Oh, it was awful. And the sex wasn't even good. She had her dog in the bed the whole time. It was weird. Like, oh. dude, I've always had like weird experiences with like dogs in bed while I was having sex with with, with women. You know, <laughs> I said plural because it's happened more than once. Um, <laughs> I had a chihuahua lick my balls one time while I was like, having sex with a girl. Like it was because the chihuahua was on the ground and I hated this dog. Like it, it was a, like me and the dog had beef. Like you could see it in size that he thought he was better than me. And I <laughs> Cause he was a fucking arrogant dog, you know. And we put the dog in the bed, and when I fuck, I like, I like, to, I, f I fuck the sheets off the bed, you know what I'm saying? So like, we were, we were having sex, and the and the covers were off, and the dog like climbed up the bed like he was climbing Everest. So it's like I had a high bed, and he climbed Everest. And all of a sudden, I felt a like a tickle on my balls, and I was like, this is great. Like I was in the middle, and I was like, this is awesome. Whatever this is, I never want it to stop. And I turned around. And and I, and I realized I was making the baby Jesus cry, and I didn't want to do that anymore, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't believe in God. Um, <laughs> uh, God damn it. That wasn't even a bit. That was just me talking about awful stuff that's happened in my life. I'm actually happy to be here. I'm, I'm excited. Like, I've been in a bad mood lately. Um, been been experiencing a lot of racism in my life. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I never got racism really. I don't. I don't know. Maybe somebody can explain it to me later. But like, I don't know why white people would be mad at like black people or Mexicans. Uh, when really white people, you gotta focus on your one true enemy. Okay, the sun. <laughs> that nigga hates you. I don't know what it is. You guys get burnt. Your skin falls off like a snake with no rhythm. Just a gross <laughs> miscarriage of evolution. Each and every one of you. <laughs> I got a cheers. That was beautiful. I like to, I like to see how how much I can piss off the audience first and then dig my way out. I'm here all night. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna be hosting all night. I don't like it. 
I hate hosting because usually when I when I do stand up comedy, I say something that somebody's like not happy with, and then they have to see me for the rest of the night, and I can just tell there's there's a tension. Um, I only got caught masturbating by my mother one time. That's enough. Is that enough, really? I think one time though. Have you ever caught your? Is this your? Is this your daughter? It's or, my daughter. That's your daughter. You ever catch her masturbating? Not that I know of. Not that you know of. Well, how would you not know? Would you? <laughs> that was just the comic. Okay, I was gonna say it's like <laughs> she's in the kitchen. It's like no, I was gonna use this cucumber for the salad. Um, <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's hard to hide, I guess. Um, is that enough, really? Would you be upset if you had caught her masturbating ever? No. No, right? Cause it's a. It's a fun. I'd be more embarrassed if you caught me masturbating. There you go. See, I, I love you. You're my favorite. Uh, daughter, how do you feel about the situation now? Um. Little, little queasy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Did you know your mom masturbates? Now I'm just gonna, I just wanna know everything that's going on here. <laughs> this, is, this is my favorite thing that's ever happened to me. Um, I, I don't inquire that far into her sexual really? practices, but <laughs> if she did, I would hope that she wouldn't tell me about it. Why? <laughs> I want to, like, if my mom's going to masturbate, I want to know everything about that. Not like not to, like, get off. I just want to know, like, times and dates so I know when to be out of the house and shit, you know? Like, <laughs> you got you to gotta get ahead of this thing. Otherwise, what? you just, like, open a door and she's there and spread eagle. Well, I don't live with her, so I don't have to worry about it. Oh, okay. I still live with my mother, so I don't know. I mean, no, I'm kidding. I don't live my mother. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't want her to call me up every time she's done it. Really? Nah. I feel like that's weird. <laughs> no, 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 my mom once told me that I should have a gay experience, like, when I moved to San Francisco. Like, she was like, you know, you never know if you're, if, you, if you're gay until you, like, you know, like, do some gay shit. She didn't say gay shit, but, <laughs> but she said, like, yeah, but, like, I think I'm the only one who says gay shit. <laughs> but, unless you have, like, a gay experience, man. Like if I if I wanted to I could but I don't know men smell weird right? I right, good talk anyway. <laughs> one time she only called me one time. I feel like that's an accomplishment. Like probably like thousands of teenage loads met their demise in that woman's house. She only had to be there for one of them. All right. <laughs> You're welcome, mom. <laughs> it was a Saturday night. I'll never forget it. I was sitting in the living room watching Cinemax late night, enjoying myself on her couch. It was beautiful. And my mother had a creaky bed, and she, her bedroom was all the way down the hall. So I knew that if she got up, I'd have enough time to put my Jimmy Jam away and turn the channel, right? Uh, but that didn't happen this night. This night, the first thing I heard was my mother breathing. Okay? <laughs> I don't know if anybody here has ever been mid-jerk and heard their mother breathing before, but it'll kill a 14-year-old boner like that, okay? So that's gone. I put a blanket over my lap, and then I turn the TV off. So now I'm just, like, sitting there in complete darkness, thinking I'm fooling somebody. Okay? And all of a sudden, my mother emerges from the hallway. And we make eye contact. It's like she was staring into my soul down at the bottom of my balls, right? And she walks in the kitchen, she makes herself a snack. And then she comes out again, and we make eye contact, and she gives me a little nod and a smile. <laughs> and then she walks all the way back to her bedroom. And I figure maybe I'm fine, you know. For all she knows, I'm like meditating and shit at two in the morning. Complete darkness. <laughs> and all of a sudden I hear a scream from the back. Stop jerking off of my couch! <laughs> <laughs> and she never mentioned it again. That's a good one. You tell me to stop and you move on. You don't rub my nose in it. That's a bad choice of words. You move on. <laughs> I caught my father masturbating one time, actually. Oh, no. I know, that shit was weird. Because <laughs> I was jerking off too. I was like, what the fuck's going on in here, huh? Turn that shit off! <laughs> Nasty motherfucker! <laughs> Still gonna take me to soccer practice later, right? <laughs> Alright, go ahead, nigga, go ahead. Right, sorry. <laughs> I just enjoy, like, the thought of me just, like, having casual conversation while jerking off to my dad. Anyways, um... <laughs> 
<laughs> anybody in a relationship here? Anybody boyfriend, girlfriend, anything like that? Yeah, there you go. Okay. Some of us in a relationship. Not you. Let's talk later. Um, <laughs> I guess not after what I just, all those things I've said, because you've met me so far. So <laughs> That's the quickest way to get a girl to not like me is, is to meet me. <laughs> they, 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 they hate me after that. Um, <laughs> not into it anymore. Um, I, I got out of a relationship a little while ago. Thanks for your support. <laughs> <laughs> woo! Yeah, woo! Yeah! I'm actually kind of torn up over the whole thing. Uh, mostly because she changed her Netflix password. That's not cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you don't do that to another human being. I never hit her not even once. <laughs> so good to her. <laughs> like, that's, my, that's my barometer for being good to her. <laughs> I didn't hit you. <laughs> I'll tell this. I'll tell this weird story that I have. Um, so, all right, this this story shows how much of a terrible human being I am. I was uh, in San Francisco, where I'm from, at the Punchline Comedy Club. It's my home club, and I love it to death. Um, I wasn't performing this night. I was just walking around the back of the club, drinking, being generally hilarious, right? And like all drunks, usually I had to take a pee, and so I went in the bathroom, and I saw the bartender. My good friend Johnny, standing at the urinal, taking a piss. And I said to myself, you know, Julian, you're a hilarious comedian. Why don't you walk up behind Johnny and play a little joke? So I walked right up behind him. And I said, yeah, that's what I want. <laughs> and then Johnny turned around, and it just wasn't Johnny. It wasn't him at all. It wasn't Johnny. <laughs> and this guy was terrified. <laughs> he was absolutely terrified. I'm just some big old black dude. Like, I had like three inches on him. I had like eight inches in him. He was not happy about <laughs> this situation. <laughs> and I feel like like if I wasn't drunk, I could have been like, Hey man, um, my bad. Uh, I thought you were a friend of mine. You don't know my feelings. Um, but instead, drunk Julian just went, you're not the bartender, and I walked out. <laughs> I just left him there with so many other questions. <laughs> Why does he want the bartender? <laughs> but you know what, I was like, I was kind of feeling bad about it, but then like, I realized I was talking to Johnny a little bit later, and the guy never came out and warned him at all. <laughs> didn't say anything to him. You would think that if that happened, you would walk out of the bathroom, well, first you'd wash your hands, because you know, saving first. But you walk out of the bathroom, and you find the closest person that looks like you. He said, hey, um, just a heads up. I'm pretty sure the fat kid from Good Burger wants to have sex with your butt, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Should I change that to, to fat James Harden? Uh, never mind. <laughs> My nose is James Harden. When I, when I didn't have the beard, the fat kid with Good Burger line worked better. Um, you know what Good Burger is? <laughs> we'll watch it later together if you want. That's right. <laughs> I'm making friends. <laughs> All right, here's the, here's here's something awful. Um, comedy takes you to a lot of like weird exotic locales. Uh, I did some shows upstate a little while ago. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I took the Greyhound bus because I'm a fucking winner. <laughs> and uh, when I got to this to the counter at the bus station, the lady was very rude to me. She was very rude to me, which why not, you know, why not? If you're gonna take a bus anywhere, uh, people don't have to worry themselves with customer service, because they know that you would be there if you had any other alternative, right? <laughs> if you're taking a bus someplace, it, it, you're, you're at the bottom of the barrel. But they're for like pregnant teens and ex-cons, and that's it. And I was neither one of those. <laughs> It was terrible. Like, honestly, I think, like, if, if, if I could get some place for, like, $20 less, I'd let three skinheads in a pickup truck drag me to my location. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was dark. Anyway, um, so I got on the bus, and I'm in the back by myself, hanging out, living life. And uh, then this lady gets on. She's about, like, 350 pounds, got a great jumpsuit. Uh, the face of a dog, just an angry, mean person, right? She sits down next to me and she starts talking. She goes, you know, 
I just got out of prison after five years. And I'm strictly dickly, but they put a woman in my cell and I just couldn't help myself. <laughs> I said, uh, we just met. <laughs> let's, let's have a little small talk first, ladies. Um, this is a 100% true story. <laughs> so she like, just continues to talk. It's just crazy. And then all of a sudden she pauses and she looks at me. And she goes, oh my God. Oh my God, you are so handsome. You are so motherfucking pretty. Can I kiss you on the mouth? <laughs> swear to God. And I said, uh, fuck no. Direct quote. I said, fuck no. And she goes, okay, 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 okay. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to turn around because you're giving me all kinds of moist down here and I just can't handle myself. Okay, I'm going to turn around. And she, she goes, swear to God. So I just actually happened. And she goes, she pauses. She goes, leans in real close. She goes, we can kiss on the mouth. Just keep it on the down low. <laughs> Nobody has to know. She's singing to me. <laughs> on the back of a fucking <laughs> And at this point, I'm terrified. Because this lady has like 150 pounds on me. If she wants something, she can take it. Right? <laughs> like I have no defense against this. So I, in order to kind of soothe her heart, I started harmonizing with her. I was like, keep it on the down low. Nobody has to know. <laughs> ridiculous. Sometimes I hear myself talk. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, Julian. <laughs> uh, talking about relationships earlier. Relationships early. I'm not good at relationships. Never have been. It's not good. It's like, you have to like be able to talk to people. <laughs> to do that shit, right? I don't. I can't talk to people. Like I don't know how to do it. I'm just a, an idiot. Like, like you have to be able to say the right things with people at the right moment. Sometimes. I'll give you an example. Like uh, um, a couple years ago, I had to take my ex girlfriend to get an abortion, right? And uh, like she got in my car. At the end of it, she's crying. So she was obviously upset. And uh, at this moment, I had to say something to comfort her and to make her feel better. Uh, but all I could come up with was, uh, did they get it all? Um, <laughs> I, everybody tensed up, I'm kidding, it's a joke. I don't want a car, we're on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> I think I lost them. <laughs> that's, that's the one. I lost, I lost them. <laughs> Um, alright, let me, let me see what we'll Go doing. further down the rabbit hole. No, I can't do that. I'm trying to be a, a nice person nowadays. Hold on a second, guys, okay? I'm trying to see something here. Okay, that, that's a good one. Got any parents in the house? Awesome. Oh, well, I guess it's right there, right? We already talked about that shit earlier. You! I'm just talking about you. <laughs> I, uh,. I don't have any kids. I think having kids is stupid. Um, you clearly made a good decision because your daughter's awesome. Thank you. Good, good stuff. <laughs> but, uh, I've been seeing a lot of like like white families adopting black children. Has anybody seen this bullshit anywhere? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking awful, awful, awful stuff. <laughs> Okay, people get mad at me when I when I say that it's that it's awful. But you you know why it's terrible? It's because you would never see the inverse of that. You would never see them allow a black family to adopt a white child. It's just it's <laughs> never gonna happen. Is there if you let me adopt a white child, I would abuse that child every day. Just like in the just subconsciously. I could not be mean to that kid. <laughs> Fucking name it Ritz or like <laughs> Casper or some shit. Um, you can't, you can't do that. Like I can see it now. I can see like like a black dude walking to an adoption agency. So like he's like, hey, uh, 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 hey, hey, come here, come here, come here, come here. We always have to look behind us just in case somebody comes up and shoots you in the back of the head. It's a <laughs> black person in America. Hey, uh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, man. Hey, look, um, look, player, I'm gonna need you to go in the back. 
and give me like five or six of them white babies, okay? <laughs> what am I gonna use them for? Well, if you must know, I am building a living, breathing chest set. I already got the black babies on board, let's do this shit. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> You can't do it. You know why you can't do that shit? It's because uh, white people don't know how to raise a black child. I can barely raise a black child. I've been black 28 years. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. Like, in order to raise a black child, you just have to read Roots and watch everything the Waynes have ever done. And then, like, that's a start. <laughs> that's the bare minimum. This is this joke isn't going to land because there's more people here, but I'm going to tell it anyway. No more black people here. It, <laughs> Raising a black child is a lot like real estate, okay, and there's three very important things. Lotion, lotion, lotion. <laughs> lotion that ashy ass black babies. I'm sick of seeing these kids looking like they just crawled out of a box of powdered donuts. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you see black people get ashy and then you look a little like, okay, it's whatever, you look powdery. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything else I can I can say. All right, let me end on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you guys my favorite thing in this world because I think we're family now. I'm having a good time. Uh, my favorite thing is the thumbs up, and it should be all of yours too. Can we have a round of applause for the thumbs up and everything it's done for the American people? Yeah. <laughs> the thumbs up is great because you can say anything to anybody as long as you follow it up with a thumbs up right after. <laughs> <laughs> it calms and quiets. So you be like, hey, hey, you're a fat whore. But you do it well. Um, <laughs> thanks, guys. That's my time tonight. I love you all. I'm going to bring Inglewood back up here because we're both the hosts of this, of this shit big tonight. I'll be here. He'll be here. I feel like we've grown and learned. You don't have to, put, you don't have to touch me. I want to touch you. You don't have to touch me. <laughs> um, what do we do now? Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Band, hey, one more time, please. Me. The mission becomes mangy for the rest of the year now at this point. Uh, hang on, we got Rashmal just coming up in a couple minutes here. Nice down, another Winter End Folk Fest! Yeah. Yeah. We're going to run around with the tip jar for Julian while we're setting up Rob. Yeah. Suggest a donation.